Welcome to a special edition of the We Are Live Fancast. This is episode three, and we have an interview with Elisa Elliott. Our show today is partnering with Dead Reviews, who arrange these interviews. You can find links for both shows in the show notes. This is Mick. And this is Redbeard. Elisa Elliott, who is known as Pegs to the We're Alive fans, is an acting coach in Los Angeles. You may have seen her in TV shows such as Nip Tuck or Dirt. Check out her IMDb page, which is located in the show notes. Elisa's students have appeared in many big name films and television series such as Entourage, Transformers, The Prestige, and many more. You can see all of this on her website at elisaelliot.com, which is also in the show notes. So we've already had the interview and we're you know about to publish this. I just want to say it was really cool getting the chance to talk to her. Yes, uh, it, you know we're so, such a fresh podcast. It's just an honor. It really was, and uh, special thanks to Dead Reviews for for uh, giving us this opportunity to interview. This uh, since they had arranged these interviews, it was great that they let us do these. I look forward to doing more of them too. And just so you guys know, whenever we do interview podcasts, it's just going to be kind of a quick little intro like this. And then we'll go straight into the interview. And once the interview's over, we'll have our regular outro, and that'll be it for that show. And But you can always remember that we'll be on every Thursday after a new release of We're Live on that Monday. So again, go check out our website. It's www.mickred.com. All right, let's do it. Hey, Alyssa. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Cool. Alyssa, uh just a few things about We're Alive first. How did you first hear about We're Alive? I heard about it through the original casting breakdown. Um, I don't know if you guys know how it works out in LA, but a lot of the castings don't come through your agent directly. They come through these websites that have what are called breakdowns, where they list what the project is and the roles. And I saw it on one of these sites and I saw the role and I was like, oh yeah, I'd love to do that. So I just recorded my audition in my living room and sent it off to Casey, and it worked out. Wow. (laughs) That's pretty awesome. I I didn't know what I was expecting, but it it wasn't that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well, most people, actually, I think I'm the only one that couldn't make it the day of the audition. I was shooting another project, but I really wanted to audition, so he let me record it from home, which was awesome. So I'm really lucky that he uh, let me do that. That is awesome. So that kind of answers our second question, too. So we'll just go ahead and move right into some of the questions about the show. Okay. Uh, What's your opinion of Peg and Michael's relationship currently? Well, you know, their relationship has always been complicated. And I think (laughs) from Peg's point of view, she really loves Michael, but he's not like following the protocol for like a good relationship. You know, you have to talk about things and you have to make everything clear. And Michael is just not very good at that. No. So so who knows what will happen with this? Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of thinking he was emotionally unavailable. So that kind of, you kind of summed it up right there. Yeah, and I think that's that's perfect because uh, that's a perfect way to describe it because Pegs is so emotionally available, right? <laughs> yes. She wears her heart on her sleeve. So with Michael being totally unavailable and Pegs over available, it's like a little bit crazy. <laughs> yes. How, um, how much do you think you relate to her character? I think I relate to her um, pretty well. I think on uh, you know just her essence. I think I have a, you know, I, I really see myself as having a similar essence to her, but it's the details that we're not similar on at all. Like Pegs likes cats. I don't like cats. I, like dogs. <laughs> I have a black thumb. I kill every plant I have. Pegs has a green thumb. So it's the details that were very different. And, and of course, like her, her sort of like, um, she's not meek or shy, but she's like that overwhelming sweetness yes so maybe i don't have that but you know in general mm-hmm. I, yeah. I think we have a lot in common i think you're pretty sweet i'm pretty sweet yes. I guess. at least you know, you're <laughs> nice to us at least that's great yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> okay uh this is going to be kind of a uh, specific question about this last show sure uh 
let's see. Uh, it was chapter 37, part one. And the little one is about to be killed by Michael. Mm-hmm. And it, it does clearly say die. And we know it's talking. And everybody's talking about that. But there's a little bit of discussion between the fans on whether or not before it said die, did it say we're alive? Huh. You know, that would be new to me if it did say that. I didn't hear that. But, I mean, you never know what they'll put in there. <laughs> right. Did you, uh, you don't hear that whenever you're recording, do you? Did they, did they have the zombie sounds playing or is that just all post-production? No, that's post-production. Okay. Oh, cool. So I so when I heard the die and all of that, it was when I listened to the episode. Okay, let's see. Just so like <laughs> that's got to be a really interesting way to to act out those scenes. It seems like you need that feedback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it you know, and I think just from having done it for so long, we sort of get the sense of what the world sounds like. We have it in our head, right? And, you know, most of voiceover actually is done solo. So where you're in a tiny booth by yourself. But this is a really awesome experience because at least we're in the room with the other actors for the most part. Right. So that's even better than most scenarios where it's just, you know, most of the time it's just cold, solo, in a booth, by yourself, just recording your lines, no dialogue. So... We can imagine the zombie sounds. (laughs) Yes. I'm going to leave our script real quick because we're about to leave the We're Alive section. Mm -hmm. I I had a question based on what you were just talking about, about the live shows. How much much work and practice goes into getting ready for those type of shows? So I, I think, you know, I think hopefully less than you guys think because we, it looks good, but (laughs) um, we have a couple uh, you know, maybe one or two or three few hour long rehearsals before we go in. I think this last time we had a rehearsal for a couple hours, then we rehearsed the day of, and that was it. Wow. And would that was that for the entire hour long chapter finale? It was. That's amazing. Yeah. So not wow. actually too much time, but hopefully, you know, it sounded like we practiced a whole lot. Right. Okay, uh, now we just want to talk a little bit more about what you and what you're doing. What what projects are you working on now, other so, than We're Alive, of course? So I do, um, you know, various, a lot of commercials, some TV shows, movies, and uh, I think the most exciting thing I'm working on right now is that I've written an animated series for sort of the 9 to 14 group, and I'm pitching it to all the major networks, so... Hopefully that will get picked up and um, oh, that's you'll cool. see it on TV one day. That's really cool. What genre? It is. It's, um, I would say, like children's animation, pretty okay. much. But not super, you know, not like a Nick Jr. or Disney Jr., more along the lines of what you would see on Disney XD, something like that. Okay. It's, is it, uh, it's not zombie related, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no. But I am sort of working on another animated feature that is zombie related. So when I'm finished with that, I will tell all you guys about it. Oh, awesome. Okay. What, uh, let's see. So, uh, just to throw things off a bit, mm-hmm. do, you, do you have any special powers? <laughs> do I have any special powers? I don't know. I mean, I'm a pretty good cook. Awesome. <laughs> so- so maybe I could I could win you over with my delicious cooking, but other than that, <laughs> and and your black thumb. Oh, and my black thumb. So yeah, like Pegs is a terrible cook, but great at growing the vegetables. I'm terrible at growing the vegetables, and I'm great at cooking them. <laughs> <laughs> we differ in that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, back to zombies a little bit. Mm-hmm. If the zombie apocalypse started for real, who would you pick to survive with from the cast of characters on We're Alive, and why? So the cast of characters as their character or as a real person? As their character. Okay, Michael, definitely. Michael. Why yeah. uh, Why Michael? Well, because he has the most, I think, military experience. He's a good decision maker. Mm-hmm. And um, he survived so far. Yes. So I think, and plus, you know, he's, um, Pegs loves him, so... And he, I think, you know, in his way, loves pegs. So <laughs> right. I, I think he would be more inclined to really protect me <laughs> what if, as pegs. 
What about Michael gets a lot of flack from for not being a good leader or making good decisions. I don't agree with that personally. Hmm. But what and not from the fans, I'm saying in the show itself, like, yeah. you know, people yeah. are always saying, you sure you need to be leading? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, um, I, I'll just throw my take on that out there is that he doesn't yeah. let his emotions make his decisions for him. No, he doesn't. And I think, you know, for the most part in this zombie apocalypse, uh, that's a good thing. You know, I wonder if at some point that can get in the way of making the right decision. But I do, I agree. I think even though people give Michael flack, I think he makes really good decisions. I agree. Okay, well, how about from the cast? Who would you pick? Hmm. <laughs> from the cast. Now, I knew this was coming up after I said that. Uh, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe Casey. Does he count? Because uh, I don't know. I, he's, the, <laughs> he's, he's cast and crew because Casey's military and Casey really knows what he's talking about. And he's, I'm assuming, researched all about the zombie apocalypse. So I would pick him. I don't think so. He's, that doesn't uh, count. No, no, that, that, that's a, actually a great answer. No, uh -huh. I'm just messing. <laughs> Let's see. Um, did you have any other shout outs or anything you want to put forward for the audience? Oh, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, you can check out my website. I actually own an acting studio where I teach, so if anybody's been to my website, they'd see that. Could you? But, that's right. We wanted to ask you about that. What do you do with the? You know, you teach. You take people that can't act at all that want to learn how to act, or just how does that work? So that's a good question. So I have people, everyone from beginners to famous stars and professionals. Mm -hmm. who come to me to either get started in acting or, you know, when I get to the professional level with these people, they're coming in for specific roles or specific auditions that they might have for big roles that they really want to do a good job. And, you know, my approach is very, is based in a lot of the different methods. So kind of, um, you know, if you know anything about acting coaching, I go from everywhere to from Stanislavski, Lee Strasberg, Meisner, Stella Adler, and all these theories. And hopefully I can help my students come up with their own method on how to approach a scene and to uh, really do an amazing job on camera or on stage. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Redbeard, did you have any more questions? I don't. Elisa, I'm sorry. Elisa, thank you so much for... Uh for accepting our call again. And would it be possible, do you think, for later on in the season to, for us to have you back and learn a little bit oh. more about you and about Pegs? Absolutely. I'd love to be back. You guys are so great. And thanks for doing this uh, fan cast. I hope a ton of people listen. Yeah. Thank you so much. All Thank right. you. Bye, guys. Talk to you later. Talk Bye. to you later. Thanks for listening to the We're Alive fan cast. If you would like to send feedback to the show, you can email us at wearealive at mickred.com, and we will read your mail on the show. We want to know what you think about We're Alive each week. Tweet us or email us your theories and reactions to that week's show. You can tweet us at, at WAFancast. Visit our website at mickred.com. Mickred is always spelled M-I-C-K-R-E-D. You can find the We're Alive Fancast on Facebook. Just search We're Alive Fancast. Special thanks to Kevin McLeod for letting us use his song Ghost Apocalypse in this podcast. This has been a Mick Red production. <laughs>